comprehensive balayage class on balayage and blonding. We'll go into uh, some other techniques, but what I want to do today is give you the knowledge, uh, the confidence to go home and execute your first or maybe next balayage very, very well and have your client be happy and come and return. <laughs> So I have a couple of preferred products that I use, and it, depending on the type of hair and the type of lift I'm looking for, I'll mix it up. Um, one of my favorites, and I think the most useful tool of all of the JA lighteners for balayage, is the Eye Blonde Cream Bleach. Um, that has such a nice putty consistency to it, it has so many moisturizing oils in there, that you can, it, it blends so well and it's not gonna sink through. It has the right amount of weight. So I use that alone, or I add it to, Elevate 7 or the new Blondest Lightener that I really, really like. Have you guys tried that yet? Has everybody tried it? No. Which one? The, the new well, Blondest well, Lightener. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, it lifts really evenly. Um, I like it a lot. I would probably use now, since we have that, more Blondest with like maybe an inch or so of the I'm Blonde, just for that nice texture. So technically, you can balayage with whatever consistency you like, but the thicker it's going to be, the more viscous it is, the less transfer you're going to have, and the less likelihood uh, the less likely you're going to get some cheetah spots or something like that. Yes? You want to say the whole question after her so you can get to it? <coughs> okay, the, our newest lightener. Huh? Um, I've used it twice in a foliage okay. um, application. It got extremely, extremely hot. Okay. Like, the foil's touching her skin, like she said. Okay. And then when I went to touch them, Oh, sorry. oh geez. And with no added heat? No, no heat, okay. just body temperature. The first application was with 20 volume, so the next person I did it on, I'm like, okay, let's do 10. Make it a little bit longer, but still the same thing. Have you had that issue? I have not had that issue. And so and these are, are my clients. I was going to say, yeah. My clients, uh, JA products all the way, okay. I know for sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, no henna or any weird chemical reactions? No. Okay, yeah. You, usually when heat occurs, it's it's telling me that there's metals. Yeah. There's yeah, some, yeah. yeah it's either copper or... I do or, live in a uh, well, water, water area. Yeah, it's got to so, be copper. Okay. It's either copper or it's iron. If, if you see rust spots in the drains, that's going to be iron. We okay, It's probably iron in our area. Okay. I've had some people that have gotten warm, but I've never had people's foils get hot to the touch. So that, to me, sounds like they probably have crazy, crazy heavy water super mineralized. And you can clarify them before the next treatment. And to do that, I would use Chloramed and set them under the dryer for maybe five to ten minutes, just so that it will pull all that out. I mean, you probably don't need to do that before a color retouch, but obviously just for their comfort and to prevent any breakage from it heating up. Yeah. I'd tell them to use it at home as a single shampoo and then follow up with, like, a BioVita Shine. Okay. And then do mid shaft ends with conditioning because they don't need it on the scalp. But you've got to continually work on getting that off. That's why I created Chloramed because my kids' hair was turning orange when they were swimming and I couldn't figure it out. And I said, well, it's not chlorine and it's not the other side. So what it has to be is what's in our water. Yeah. And our, our water was rust. See, okay. green is going to be copper, okay. right? Orange is going to be uh, rust. Right. right, for my. So I had, on the scale of 1 to 10, I had 11. So bad that even the guy from Sears that came out to try to sell me some kind of water softener, he just shook, he, they sent him to the lab, he just shook his head, he said, they're not, nothing we can do. Okay. Until we got city water. So but anyway. And I do color. use the chloramid on the um, back bar, but you want me to Oh, they got, to have, they got to have a bottle at home. Send it home with them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I have not experienced chloramed fading color. Um, I think no. that if you were to leave it on for an extended period of time, and if it were maybe something like a super bright direct red, obviously, with additional cleansing, that is going to fade. But for most natural colors and for most gray coverage, I don't think that chloramed would ever lift that much, no. especially because I do have older clients that swim, that do things like that, and they have it to remove the chlorine, and I'm, they're not coming in, and I'm not cringing at their color. So I, get it. I think it depends. There's always a balance, but yeah. Um, I really like the BioVita Shine High Lift. Um, I use that a lot on people with natural hair, um, completely virgin. I prefer to use high lifts on somebody that's already a seven. They say they'll give you four levels of lift. Unless you're going for a really sunny, warm result, use it on a seven because the, uh, the ash blonde and the violet aren't going to do as much at a nine or at an eight or a nine as they would, you know, at that ten level. And that's what gives it that natural, really beautiful kind of blended gradient. Um, I do that a lot of the time as a first session. So if somebody comes in and they're like, and I want to see how they lift and they have virgin hair, 
there's no reason to bleach somebody's hair three times. Do it once with a high lift, gently, because even a high lift with double 40 is gentler than 20 volume if you're letting the process for the same time. So do as much as you can in foil with the high lift, and then next time, go through, and you can do that and kind of build, and you get more colors that way. What is a double 40? So for high lifts and toners, we mix two to one instead of the regular one to 1.5. So it's double uh, developer to the color. Um, and with high lifts, that's because it's forcing open the cuticle a little more and depositing it. And so generally 40, I will use 30. I have no problem using high lifts with 30. Only use it with like 20 if you are just trying to blend some gray. Do you see what I'm saying? I have a lot of uh, women that come in and they're like, hey, listen, I love getting my hair colored. I'd like to come in less and grow out my natural gray. You can do that fairly easily with a haircut a full highlight and um, a high lift color at the uh, everything else, and then once their gray grows out, it, the salts and the peppers are a little more blended because they all match a little better. Um, I use ultra glazing a lot as well um, in between balayages or to just lift the base. So that's something where you can apply, you can do a wet balayage where you apply ultra glazing all over the head and then you lighten on top of it, and then you can mush kind of together. You can. Uh, blends at the spot where they meet, and that gives a much brighter, sunnier result without you having to actually color all of their hair. Everybody has different needs. Some people want to come in every three months, six months, whatever. That's the beauty of balayage. It's lived in color and it's personalized. So, I, if somebody wants foils around the face, I'm letting them know you're going to be in here in six weeks because it's not going to look as good. But if they come in and they're like, hey, my goal is to see you a little less, I'll be like, I get it. I'm not offended. I'll see you in five months for your next session if you take the proper home care and you come in for a glaze and cut in between. So, you know, it really just depends. Everybody has different needs. Mm -hmm. AA paint is fantastic for, like, watercolory, vividy results. Um, I use sometimes just the straight yellow, um, the sun, to tone. Sometimes I will just tone with direct dye if I don't need to process them any further. Um, but I like that as a glaze afterwards. So a lot of the color, a lot of the photos you'll see, it looks so complicated because it actually is. There's about four to six steps that you need to do. So that is a nice way to kind of after melt um, your color melt with AA paint. If you have somebody coming in with a rainbow when it's really, really blended, that's when you would do all of your regular balayage steps, not use a biomono after the lightener because that will block the absorption of the um, AA paint, and then go ahead and blend that all together. I like combing through my vivids as well, or combing it through strategically, just depending. So uh, that can give it that really nice rooted look. A lot of girls, um, I, I would say in my age range, want like a, like a lavender blend it up to their natural, and so you have to do all those steps to get them light and then just place them last. Uh, one question, are yes. you doing the ultra glazing all over before you put the bleach on? Or the I would say the do most, keep it mostly on the, on the scalp, on the scalp, towards the roots, yeah. Where you want to blend it in. Yes, okay. yes, and then the you, you paint oh. your lightener up to meet it, and then I do a lot of manual blending. Um, I prefer to manually blend. There are specific brushes that you can use, blur brushes, things like that. To me, I think that just kind of <coughs> takes away, adds a step, that's more things for me to wash after the client. So I like using just my own two fingers, depending, to make sure we've got the right texture. So balayage is technically a specific type of technique that focuses mostly on surface painting. That being said, over the last few years, balayage has kind of just come into hand painting. And so really, whenever you're hand painting, when you're going free form completely, it's okay to call that balayage. Um, so it's from the French word balayer to sweep, which just describes that gentle sweeping motion from root to scalp, that nice gradient that everybody would like. Okay, so the way that you apply is going to depend entirely on the client themselves and what their end result looks, their, what their end result they're going for is. Um, I prefer to apply my balayage to straight hair. For me, it's much easier. Um, if somebody has curly hair and they wear it curly all the time, that's a different story. But if they wear their hair straight at least 50% of the time or more than 50% of the time, you're definitely going to want to do them from that position because the straighter the hair is, it, the easier it is to paint. It's going to be like, it's, it's like drawing on a piece of paper that isn't crumpled, you know? It's a nice clean line. Um, wet or dry. So if they are looking to do, if they're looking to do one session, I might just do a wet balayage. If they're looking for something kind of gentle, I would pre-treat, I you know, um, do like a biocomplex, um, get them all ready for that, take them out of the bowl, and towel dry a little bit, and then go ahead and start working. I work from the front to the back when I do wet balayages, um, because that's where they need to see the brightness the most. Um, and I don't recommend using more than 20 volume when doing that, unless you have done it before. Don't do your first wet balayage with 40, even if you know they'll need it. Um, because it just it reacts very differently and 
I always say the lower the volume, the safer the result, and especially if you have more than one client, uh, you do not want to be upping the strength just you know, more than you need to. Um, okay, so surface painting or full saturation, that kind of goes into the, the technicalities of the word balayage. I do, I would say, maybe 30% surface painting, most of what people are wanting is actually kind of a hybridized result between balayage and an all-over lightener. That's the amount of saturation people are usually looking for on the ends. So you could surface paint through the top of the section and you can, uh, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate right here. You can surface paint on the top of the section and then completely saturate the bottom. Thank you, Ms. Lori, for being my model today. Up there. Okay, so what I would say to do is first you want to kind of like just barely butterfly kiss the hair with the tiniest amount of pressure and then slowly blend it upwards. And so see this is surface painting on the outside of this section. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to saturate this end. So sometimes people will come in and they'll say, hey, I really like an ombre. And nobody really wants an ombre. That's kind of not just like about 10 years ago, but usually a harsher line um, than what most people are looking for. Ombres do not grow out well. Balayage, you can grow out much better. Um, you, it just it looks better for longer. You're more likely to get more referrals if they look good for more than just two weeks. So um, on this side, I'll go ahead and do a full saturation, which is going to be me going up a little bit more towards the root. So sometimes when people show you a photo of a really rooted balayage, it is a full balayage that then has something um, that they then color mounted a shadow root in. But that is what I mean by a hybridized all-over lightener section, because that is essentially an all-over lightener application. So if you are comfortable with all-over lighteners, definitely slow yourself down, bump your developer, because for it to all process evenly, you have to take your time, and it has to be fully saturated. So, yes, I'm just to have a towel. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so sectioning three, five, or none at all. Here's some napkins. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so depending on the hair um, and how much hair they have, depending on um, how much of the hair we're actually balayaging, I offer a partial balayage, um, face framing balayage, and a full balayage. So for a partial balayage, it's going to be similar to a partial highlight. Everything throughout the sides and crown, anything the sun naturally touches. Thank you so much. Um, and for uh, a face framing, I would just section the first two inches of her hair and then one diagonal section over the ear. So sometimes you'll see photos where it's all the chocolate brown, it's obviously been colored. The two steps aren't normally done at the same time, but they absolutely can be. So I would say in that scenario, go ahead and color the rest of the head, root the front, balayage, and then melt your root color down. So keep that bowl with you. You don't want to throw it away or start over. Use the same product when you're doing that. Um, so let me show you a couple of sections real quick. So for the none at all sectioning, that would be if somebody has um, shorter hair than this usually, that's very easy to just weave through, pick up, hand paint, and blend. <laughs> Classic, um, just straight, or, uh, more horizontal uh, sections than one might normally take. But when you're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and show the technique that I taught in Chicago, which is kind of doesn't look like it, but this is really one of the easiest ways to get through a head of hair, especially if they're thick, to do a balayage. So you're zigzagging that? Yep, I'm zigzagging. So I'm going to show you three different techniques today. This is the zigzag one. And this is good for people if you see those photos of really strong dimension, but it's really blended. And you're like, how do they go in there and do that without it looking chunky? When you do it this way, it's forced to highlight. And you can paint right on top of these little mountains and blend all the way up. And you can even go in between if you wanted to. 
actually showing the camera this on the screen. Sure. Just so we can get everyone to see that. Yeah. So let me do this. Can I uh, just use this for one second? Mm -hmm. And this enables you to section as you go. So this is really good if you're low on clips, have a bunch of other people there, um, because it's so straightforward. So this will dry to and will, will process to a bolder, nice, diffused look. The bottom, that one on the left, is going to be much more of a blonde section. Let me go ahead and do this one too. I borrowed from this other section to do that on that side. I like having a fairly loaded brush, and, and I always start at the mid and then work my way up. So I think that if you're going to be saturating on the bottom, you should start with a fairly loaded brush. Um, but if you know you're only going to be doing surface painting, then it doesn't need to be crazy. So this is me fully saturating a zigzag section. And you that's going to be... You do not tease at the root of the thing where you do this. I have a couple of opinions about teasing. Um, first of all, it's never pleasant for the client. Um, they really do not like the comb out, the brush out, no matter how nice of a wet brush you use, it's not great. Um, that being said, I do tease occasionally, um, partially to separate the sections, um, to make it stand out, kind of how I know it would be if they styled it with a lot of volume, and they, you know, as opposed to them coming in and me just coloring on top of it. Um, I do tease to diffuse the line. I don't recommend teasing more than once or twice, because then you're just making it harder on yourself. Some people will wrap the heck out of it. It's so much easier to just go in and do a nice weave in that area. I, I don't know, sometimes I think that a lot of the videos or something that show balayage techniques are almost intentionally confusing because there really is no reason to have somebody look like a Halloween person, you know, with all those crazy knots and stuff. Um, however, uh, backcombing is, is completely optional and some people do like it. If you have any concerns, it's kind of a forgiving thing that you can do to yourself by giving um, just, a, it's like, it's, it's, it's a good thing to use when you're starting out. For me, overall, I like the hair as straight as possible, and when you tease, no matter what you're doing, you're kind of creating some fuzz there. Also, if you want to bring your balayage all the way up and you've teased here, you cannot hit the tease, or else you're gonna get put like spots, cheetah right. spots, nobody likes those. So since I bring it up to the scalp so often on people, that's another reason why I don't. So if you were just gonna have like a, you know, kind of that really lower, gentle, subtle, kind of maybe around the shoulders and chin type, because some people do just want a little brightness there, then for sure, tease, tease. But yeah, and you don't need to go crazy with it. But I would say the gentler the better, um, because you're gonna have to rinse all that lightener out before you tone anyways. And I don't always condition before I tone, sometimes I just really make sure that all that lightener is out, and it honestly adds about an extra five to 10 minutes of the bowl. And I'm already at the bowl for like five minutes, so. <laughs> That's fine. It'll be, it'll be okay. So, I have some examples of um, the different types of balayage that I've done. So I have a first session, and this was somebody's first session. This was lightened with uh, this would have been Elevate. Um, this was definitely Elevate. It was way before Blondes. This was Elevate and the I'm Long Cream Bleach. That one on the left, that was her first session. And I did that with the zigzag. Um, and she, as you can tell, had a lot of hair. So the more hair they have, the more they're going to pay for it, and we all know this. I recommend not ever pricing a balayage less than $100. So that's like roughly my face framing price. Um, and full start at $160, and it's $20 for extra bowl of product. You're going to need to use a lot of product for this. Um, so keep that in mind and make sure that you're charging accordingly, because accordingly, if you're spending three to five hours with somebody to make sure that it's all fine, your first application, your first few balayage applications will probably take you 30 minutes to an hour. So make sure that you know that. I'm a much faster hand painter than I am a foiler. And I think it's just the time that I was licensed, what was, what was going on. And I know a lot of people back in the day are like, well, I can, I can do a full head highlight in 30 minutes. That is so impressive to me. I, I have to do a balayage, so it, it just depends. Um, and the one on the right, um, that was her second session. So you can see, uh, that's a different client, but that was a second session for that client. So you can kind of see down here how we have... Wait a minute, that's two different people? That's two different people. Oh, okay. Sorry. So this, this is just, these are two examples of classic color. Yeah. So this is surface painting, and she was, her surface was painted twice. So if you can see, she's still got a lot of shadows, a lot of natural, through the mid to the bottom. And that's because we kept that separation <coughs> so that they have a lot of contrast. Um, on this next slide, 
Okay, so this is a before and after. This is my best friend Stacy, and she has such long hair. So <laughs> this um, was, at, it had been maybe like six months, she was very bad about coming in, uh, six months since her last balayage, and then that was her next balayage. And so you can do a lot with a lot of root if you're very specific about your placement. And uh, throughout the crown, I really, really think that it helps to apply diagonally towards the, uh, diagonally back from the face. And then sometimes you might tease throughout the very top. So that when you're doing that, it has like a nice little layover. Kellen? Um, I'd like to know what formula did you use for her balayage on the middle? Oh, oh, um, I toned her, I think with uh, 9A, with a little bit of um, probably ash concentrate. She's very brassy, as you can tell in the uh, previous photo. I use a lot of the ashes. I use double ashes. I use the double ashes more as an ash additive than a standalone color, although I haven't been getting as many silvers and grays recently. Back when I was doing a lot more of them, I would definitely have used them. I'm, uh, you can also use sugar. Um, you can add a little bit of that to whatever you're using. I don't really use the classic cream color, but you know there. So your highlight product was? Oh, oh, that was Elevate. Elevate, Elevate with Eye Blonde. Okay. I always add a little bit of Eye Blonde to everything that I'm doing. I know technically Eye Blonde, it says like once it's opened, it has a particular amount of time until it's gone. I use it until it's gone, and I've never noticed it getting less active, honestly. So. Carrie, what did you do uh, for her for her crown on top? I mean, the top hair has is uh, is on that the left her, or on the right? In the middle. In the middle is that her natural, possibly yep. ultra glazing, or what is that? No, I did not ultra glaze her, but that is her natural color. Okay. So the, the only thing we did to that was tone. I don't oh. always color melt people. I will only color melt people usually if they had stubborn color to lift through and the hair wasn't lifting. <laughs> So if you are lifting and everything is great and then you see orange, you have to color melt in order to still keep that blend. Yes, Katie? Harriet, when you color melt, do you tone the ends first and then go back and do, do the base? It depends. It's better to put the lighter color on first so that it can absorb and process more. Um, and also, when the hair is filled with the lighter color, you're less likely to um, have any sort of bleeding. Not yeah, not just bleeding, but honestly, it I feel melts. <laughs> yeah, it really does. It helps buffer the darker color. Mm -hmm. So, and I can show you how I would apply rough and ends Harriet, yes, ma'am. Um, don't you find that by adding the I'm blonde also helps with the consistency of brushing it on? That's that's the reason I do it. Yes, yes because it's so nice and oily. Right now, I'm using. Ivan's Brushless Shave Cream, which has a really nice oily consistency. I can tell it's very moisturizing for any of the men in the room. <laughs> but um, as I move up, and you can kind of brick lay like you would maybe during a full highlight to do that. And that gives it like a really nice, very look. I was one of those people where growing up, you know, some people can draw a straight line in one go. I drew a straight line in 15 goes. Like, I, so that's why I think balayage makes so much sense to me, is because I'm really just retracing the same lines and moving it up over and over. Oh, gorgeous. And Harriet, when you do your um, partings, do you, do you put anything underneath that section that you're doing now it to depends. protect it? It depends. We usually, usually no, I don't need to. And so that's, that's another kind of thing where teasing can come in handy, is it can help separate. So if you are teasing, only tease the bottom, and then it'll stand a little more and you won't have sections laying on top of each other. If I'm saturating the bottom of these sections, it's just going to be a saturated part sitting on top of another saturated part. Okay. So that isn't a concern necessarily. If I were, like I did on that second section, kind of almost hybridizing the balayage with the all over lightener, yes, cotton, something else, just because you do not want any issues at the root, because then you will have to go paint something on later. Then you just took it from a lightning service to a color mount. So basically, you can turn something beautiful into a correction really quickly if you aren't paying attention, or uh, maybe if you're a little bit too fast or have it mixed to the right consistency. So technically, the right consistency for a balayage lightener is you're supposed to be able to turn the bowl upside down and have it stay. And I, that's why I like the I'm Blonde, is because it has enough tack to it, that it's, it's nice and moist. So I'm actually going to move this over here because that might be a little easier for me. Okay. I'm going to continue working up around the head, and then I'm going to show you how I would do a face framing section. Yes. 
And you can absolutely leave a mail when you're doing these things if you are at all worried. And sometimes when we're doing more than one thing, it really makes sense to do different things in different places. So a lot of the balayage that I do, I'll do a balayage and then they'll come in for a partial highlight. I'll do a balayage, they'll come in for a full highlight. So I like switching up the method of which I'm kind of providing that dimension because at the end of the day, it, then it looks so much more beautiful, has all these different techniques, and it's almost impossible to copy. So I'll do maybe like a diagonal back partial the first time, and then the next time I'll come through horizontally and baby light. So every time you should be blending, you should be adding more blonde. This is a nice saturated section. So I, depending on where I am in the head, elevate sections more than others. When you're around the face and when you're in the front, you need to elevate it, especially if they have a cowlick or some sort of wonky thing in the bangs that you don't want to pop up and you know, not look good later. So how long would it take you to do the whole head with the process that you're doing now, do you think, just approximately? 20 minutes, 25, not long at all. Um, she's got a, a really easy head of hair to work mm -hmm. through. Um, the thicker and the longer the hair, the more you're going to be spending time-wise. So I'm going to show you guys a face framing section now. And I went ahead and zigzagged it the same way just to be consistent. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm not sure, but people are welcome to move around. I don't know if it's not going to be easy for No, I meant just to show you. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Could you stand up for a moment? Oh, sure. So this is a, these are both fully saturated sections. And this you don't need to worry about. I know that looks concerning, but because it's fully saturated, that is all coated. If you saw that up here, that's something to worry about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Of course. I have a lot of clients that want what you're doing, except mm -hmm. they want more of the dark mixed in. Uh -huh. So would you just weave? Yeah. And just do the same way with the weave and not worry about it bleeding underneath? Yes, yes, I would do that. Um, technically, I think that's called like brochage, or there's there all sorts of different um, terminology for the, the smaller sections and things like that. Um, but yeah, you could, you could definitely do that. Sometimes I will literally just weave out the low light, um, or I'll drop every other section, which is another thing. Like, you can take larger sections and leave small slices of their natural in between, gotcha. and then that's a lot more, and then they still have that... Uh, darkness from root to tip and it helps grow out a little better yeah okay thank you of course so for this one because it's around her face i'm going to over direct it towards me and i'm going to start painting all the way almost to the face and that's what makes it look so homegrown and like it's just coming out of there is because we're painting all the way to the scalp almost so the same way you would uh highlight and just barely weave um, your baby lights around the face framing with a with a foil highlight. Go ahead and stand up and turn on. Um, can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. I connected right at the temple, so you don't have to blow out the entire spot. A lot of balayages we see, they want the that, what they call it, like the money piece or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and that's that section that splits with the bang or that really frames the front of the face. For this, this is just a very natural kind of way to do it. I normally connect probably at about six points around the face and so maybe every inch, inch and a half, that way they see it, they see it's there, but it's also going to be the first thing that they see to move when it starts growing out. So at the very least they'll need to come in for a face turning balayage or maybe a fold if they want to go lighter. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you're saying pulling the, the hair toward the face like that's going to be easier to get that line in? To, yes, it's mm -hmm. much easier to get a perfect front section if you're staring straight at it and you're elevating and over directing it towards yourself. So when I did this, I basically painted this pretty firmly, pretty strong over here, there's not much here. We know that this is going to connect to the back after it's done processing. This is going to be a shadow, kind of like what Kitty was asking about. We only technically balayaged half of this and the bottom third. So that kind of connects it and that's something that's really easy to do. Now I'm going to do a straight section instead of the zigzag. Depending on the hair, um, I, I will do a straight section. It's just faster and I think a little more random and funky when you do the zigzag pattern. <coughs> but so for this, since we already connected to the face there, we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to bring it up 
a little higher on this side. And when I say manually blend, see, so do you see how when this drops, it looks like it's the same section? Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a shadow underneath that that makes that look brighter. So it's all light play. Everything mm -hmm. we do, so much of beauty, like highlighting and contouring, that's what we're doing with the hair right now. So. Okay, so this exact section. That is a terrible zigzag. Okay. And I usually have a couple of brushes out on my cart or at my station, just so when these things, because uh, as you're applying, you're moving up and down, you're going to pick up little hairs, you know. You can get a fuzzy brush like I'm dealing with right now. It helps to have a larger dry brush to blend or um, just a couple clean brushes to use as you move through because the small hairs, even if they're their hairs on your brush, could eventually mess up that blend. So this is me connecting it again to the face framing. She's got some little wispies around here that I'm going to come in and detail a little better. But yeah, you really don't need to be afraid of paying close to the scalp. Um, and that's, I think, a place that gets ignored a lot. But when I'm painting, if I was doing a full balayage, I would do those baby hairs last, absolutely last, because they're going to be a little more fragile. And if you maybe if they have a partial highlight and you're doing balayage in the back with 40, and they're already super blonde in the front, then you know you really do have to be very careful with what you're doing. I overlap over previously uh, lightened sections all the time with no problem. That being said, I watch it like crazy. I constantly have my hands in it. I do not put balayages under the dryer. Um, some people do with the wet balayage you might be able to get away with it a little more, especially if you want to like pump up that ultra glazing. However, you're going to want to double towel them because it's, it's, it's going to be kind of runny and a little bit more messy. So, as we get to this, her part, you have a couple of options. So she has a straight part, a consistently straight part. I'm blocking myself, yes. And um, so what we can do is if she had a highlight that she was looking to grow out and blend, you could just lift this top section right where you know she'll always be from and just do a quick leave and then drop it out, and then paint it on like that, if that makes sense. So kind of like what you were asking, Kitty. Mm -hmm. That's really common to do around the face, that if people are used to what a highlight does for them, uh, with what they're seeing to the scalp, and they're wanting to have a more low maintenance look, this is like the highest low maintenance in a way, because you're basically splitting it right down the middle. So that's nice and bold, and yet it'll still blend. She's getting that blonde that she's looking for. Okay. So throughout the crown back here, So here we are with this crown section. And I am going to have to clip it back. She's got a lot of volume today. You do? Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> okay. OMG. Right? <laughs> so a lot of balayage um, throughout the back. I see that this kind of piece 